Hello and welcome to True Blues TV. Your host Nick Murray here. We're going to preview the round two action. I'm here with my special co-host, well, season co-host, Will Pike. Thanks, Moz. Great to be here. And uh, True Blues TV, we've got it off the ground this year, so hopefully we'll be able to provide uh, plenty of interviews through the course of the year and plenty of insights into the, the Pran Career Club. 100%. It's going to be a massive season. We're just here outside the season launch. It was a fantastic evening. It was. We had a uh, Huss guest speaking, which uh, we'll give you a clip of later. We've had a little golf tournament over here to my right, which has been good fun. Little pitching challenge. Div went out and bought a flag and stuff. So plenty of divots on Turak Park as well, which Dill will be thrilled about. But um, no, good night. Good way to start the season. Fantastic. And here's a little bit of the interview with David Hussey. G'day, mate. How are you going? We, we haven't rehearsed anything, by the way. That's your turn to talk. Yeah, thanks. How are you? <laughs> I'm not great with the funnies like Neil, but I'll, uh, I'll give it a go, I guess. But this is my actual fourth time at training in the last nine years, so, yeah, should be privileged. <laughs> um, David, you first came here in 0102, is that right, to play for Paran? Yep. Um, you hadn't played representative cricket for Western Australian, just state seconds. Since then... Um, you've played for a few different clubs and organisations around the world. Um, I've just got to do something for 30 seconds. Could you just tell everyone the, all the different clubs in order that you've played for since you first came to Paran 11 years ago? Yep, no worries. It's probably a bit boring, but I uh, was lucky enough to come over here 2000, 2000, sorry, 2001, 2002, and then got to start uh, playing for Victoria, um, which is... Uh, very, very privi privileged to do so, and then got a chance to play Canterbury with Nottinghamshire. Nottingham. Canterbury. Nottingham. I'm, I'll count them. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Victoria. Two. Nott Nottingham. Yep. Yeah, two. Um, then lucky enough to uh, get drafted in the IPL with Kolkata Knight Riders. Kolkata, yep. Kolkata. Then, <laughs> then got sacked by them and got picked up by the Kings Eleven Punjab. Punjab, then, yep. And then uh, <laughs> I was also <laughs> sacked, sacked by them. And got yep. picked up by the uh, Chennai Super Kings for a year. Chennai. Who's counting these? Yep. But, but probably my favourite ever team was the uh, <laughs> the Northern Districts Knights. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I played one game for them, a T20 game, and uh, flew in at about three in the morning. Uh, we lost to Tyson Fielded, bowled them out for 60. Uh, Brad Hodge got about 25 of about 10 balls, and... Uh, I think I got home that night about 5am, 5, 5 it was probably one of the best nights out celebrating, it was unbelievable. Everyone thinks that's great, how much did you get paid for that game? <laughs> got about 5,900 US dollars and probably spent probably 2,000 of that on the bar <laughs> that night. So. Did, we, did we mention the West Indies, have you been, you been over there as well? Yeah, yep, yeah, sorry I forgot <clears> that, <throat> probably one of the worst times of my life actually going over, travelling all the way to the Caribbean. Um, Better play with the Antigua Hawks, Bills. Love the cricket. I probably didn't like the place too much. So I know from speaking to you before, you had the chance to go back again to the Caribbean Premier League, but you decided not to? No, I didn't. Uh, I got the opportunity to go back again, but I didn't really want to. Um, I thought it was a new phase of my life. Uh, just become the batting coach or the senior batting coach at Cree Victoria. And uh, trying to, my new goal is um, to try and upskill the, uh, the young, young and up-and-coming players to uh, fulfil their dreams of playing Test cricket for Australia. And uh, I, I'm desperate to see a few, finally see a few Victorian players playing uh, Test match cricket at a Boxing Day test uh, um, or be in the test team on a regular uh, occurrence. That's a pretty standard boring line that you spin out on SEN all the time and you tell people, but... You know, what do you really think? You, you saved the Shield final for Victoria last year. <laughs> in the last game you played in the Matador Cup, you were man of the match. You starred for the Stars last year till you got injured. Was there another year left in you, perhaps? Um, probably, yeah. Uh, I must admit, when I got tapped on the shoulder to say, that's it, uh, it hurt. Um, I kicked cans for a couple of days and... Uh, I figured I still wanted to play and uh, I still felt I was good enough to play um, at the highest level or at the level that I was currently at. And probably what burns me the most is uh, when you're playing at that level but then you get told you can't play anymore, it's um, because they're going to bring up a new bloke who's possibly a chance to play for Australia. But it's more so, has this guy worked hard enough to get to where, where I actually am at the time? Is this guy going to play for Australia? Like, who's got that crystal ball to actually see if this guy's actually good enough to play for Australia or not? 
Uh, but after kicking a few cans and uh, going home and spending time with uh, my wife and uh, my two kids is actually probably a blessing in disguise. Uh, I spent pretty much all winter home with them and as you can see I put on a couple of kilos, uh, not, not doing much other than eating and, uh, and drinking with them. So it's probably a blessing in disguise and get a, get a few more opportunities to play for Paran which is something I uh, haven't done so in the last few years anyway. And you signed up with the Stars for how long? Uh, I've signed up for, for this year anyway. Um, somehow I've knifed a few people in the back to become captain, so uh, and I'll definitely use that as a negotiation to probably sign one, maybe two more years uh, to pay the mortgage off. So, Which, which house is that mortgage? <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually have a mortgage, I just said it. Uh, <laughs> just to be normal. Um, so the Stars this year, you're captain. Yep. Um, obviously you've lost Clark and White out of that batting line-up. Who's going to replace them? Yeah, tough one. Uh, we're actually going for a, a bit of a Victorian uh, mould. Uh, we figure that if um, you sort of generally know the surroundings, uh, you're going to like uh, really improve quickly, and you're going to uh, pretty much uh, fight and, and probably play and try a bit harder for for the brand. Um, so we're going for a, like a young kid like Sebastian Gotch who we're going to sign in the next couple of days. We've got Rob Quine, he's probably going to re-sign. We've got Peter Hanskin, Marcus Dornis, and. We're probably building to something, maybe not next year to win, to win the whole thing, but I think, I reckon in uh, two or three years' time, I think we're going to be the powerhouses uh, once again, and hopefully we're going to uh, actually win a grand final. So you're saying this year you don't put money on the stars? You're not allowed to bet on cricket, Neil. Are you? Oh, you're not, but I can. <laughs> so, um, also the Cricket Australia 11, just before you signed as the batting coach of Victoria, there was a possibility that you may take a leadership captaincy role with that team that's not going too well. What happened there? Um, it was floated, uh, and to be fair, it's a, it's a good good concept in theory, like playing the kids and, and trying to upskill them or quickly upskill them to playing first-class cricket or playing in the first-class cricket league. But after seeing them play the last couple of games, uh, once against New South Wales uh, and then once against Victoria, um, I seriously think these young kids are going to be scarred. They face the, the fast bowling of Mitchell Stark and, and, and James Pattinson and... But no disrespect to the kids, they're very talented, but they haven't faced that quality of fast bowling uh, yet. And I, I know when I was first coming through, if I faced uh, a Joe Angel back in the day, or a Brad Williams, uh, if some, of, some of you people might remember him, they were fast bowlers, and that really took me back, thinking, I'm not good enough for this level. And uh, it really made me think, well, I've got to get back to uni now. Cricket's not going to be a goal for me. Um, I'm going to get a proper job, and that was sort of it. But I was quite fortunate to fall on my feet uh, at this great club. So. Um, we'll take a couple of questions from the floor in a minute, but before we do, last one from me. So, how long have you signed up as a batting coach at Victoria? I've signed for two more two years, um, which it's been really enjoyable uh, thus far. Uh, I, I love love being on the uh, shop floor and working with the guys and, and trying to get them to fulfil their dreams and, and just get them to become the best player than they can, that they can possibly be. Uh, yet there's also another side of cricket which people probably don't know about. You're for, forever writing notes and uh, and sending in reports and which different players should be, uh, how they're actually improving and what you are going to implement for them to get to the new level. Whereas I prefer the other way around is how are you going to get to the new level? Like you have to take guard, you have to watch the ball, you have to hit the boundaries for four. Um, it's got nothing to do with the coach, it's all about you as a player. So you've always planned a couple of years in ahead. What are you going to be doing in three, four years? Coaching, cricket, kicking the footy with your kids? Um, my master plan was to uh, send my wife back to work. She's a clever one. Um, but <laughs> sadly, that's uh, fall, fallen over. Um, so I'll probably be a batting coach for, for the next couple of years. I'm really enjoying that at the moment. Um, I'll try and maybe coach a, a county team or a batting coach at a county team or something. Uh, Christy and I really enjoyed our time in England. and. Yeah, I think uh, maybe in a couple of years' time we'll probably head over there. Mm. So, For those of you who don't know, David's got um, a daughter and a son. I went to see David at his place last week and he I was... wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> Your son does look a bit like me, actually. He's a couple of... um, but David went to say hello and he was kind of watching the kids out the back at the same time and he went, oh, sh He had to run about three metres and jump into the pool because he's... Little bloke was slowly sinking to the bottom. It was, it was quite funny. He worked, worked out. He, Sebastian thought it was hilarious. David was a bit wet. But um, Are there any questions for David while that you've got him? That story didn't happen, OK? I'm, I'm a good father. Very good father. It happened. Any questions for David? Isaac, you've always got a question. Thought you might. 
Oh, good question. Very good question. Um, well, it probably summed up my football career. Last game of the year, when I got dragged halfway through the second quarter, um, put on the pine, and they said, right, we're going to put you back on in defence. Sorry, I don't do defence. <laughs> they said, no, it's OK, it's OK. You're just the spare man of defence. Just quarterback all the plays. No, I don't run back with the pack, no. No, no, it's fine. They only play four in the back half, in their forward half. Oh, four in the front half. I had about 50 touches. It was that easy. <laughs> you played Club 18 for Paran, is that right? Yeah. In the amateurs this year. A few other Paran cricketers played in that team? Yep. No, I'm not actually a very good uh, player at all, but uh, we had a couple of uh, recruits. Uh, one, DeBolfo, who's a very classy player. Um, classy. Kicked nine in one game. Um, yeah, probably the standout. Probably the second best player in the team. And we had a young Matthew Bomber Wilcox, who's probably a highlight of his season, was getting in a in probably a verbal stoush with an old Xavier player, and his mouth guard happened to fall. The opposition player's mouth guard fell on the ground, so Matt decided to pick it up and throw it up on the bank. <laughs> Turnover came. Matt's in the goal square, grabbed it, kicked a goal, and basically told the, uh, his opponent where to go. Any other questions? The way David reacts with people at club level, he'll probably disappear straight into his car and straight out afterwards. He won't want to stop and meet the common folk. So now's your chance to ask him a question. No, you can ask him how much money he's worth. Yep, Higgsy. Um, when, you came, when you came to the brand, like, your, did you have, were you determined to play in state cricket or did you Yeah, good question. No, um, I was probably more to get out of home, get out of Perth. Um, I was pretty uh, lucky. I lived on the beach. Everything was done for me. Lived at home, cooking, cleaning. Um, I was at uni doing bugger all and uh, worked two days a week. Uh, one day at a lettuce picking place uh, at four in the morning and another place at a marketing company. So it's probably more to get out of home and uh, this is sort of a, an easy start into the workplace life. And uh, I guess... First year playing at Paran, I, I didn't really like Melbourne that much. Um, I really missed home and it was bloody cold and I hated the cold. And uh, Some of my teammates, the person I live with actually, um, I fell in love with a girl at a Friday O'Reilly's about two in the morning and then happened to go to the bathroom and then my roommate actually stole her off me. So uh, <laughs> I didn't really feel that wanted. Um, Getting back to a serious point though, the first, the first year David came here, he would... Not trained too hard. I hope you don't mind me saying this. He made 550 runs for Paran that year. All before he, Christmas. All before Christmas, yeah. And then you went home for Christmas and you came back and you were a bit of a party boy and you're not very good at drinking, I must say, and everyone who's been out with David will admit that. And then you got a chance to play Vic Seconds against touring English team at the MCG with yep. Harmison, Flintoff, Sidebottom. Jo Sidebottom, and you got 100 against them. Yep. You probably shouldn't have been picked, to be fair. No. You got picked on potential. And then that winter, I don't know what happened, it was David Hooks, but you got super fit. I was on the couch watching Melrose Place and <laughs> all that. Well, you and a bloke called Brad Neiman, who was a wicketkeeper at this club, went and got super fit. And then the next year you made 820 runs and took 30 wickets and that was it after that. Yep. <coughs> it was a pretty good year. Yeah. <laughs> it's just interesting that, you know... He took it seriously all of a sudden and then now he doesn't have to work a day in the rest of his life. Any other questions? Last one. Uh, Nick. Uh, Sorry, we'll have one more from Croft. Um, a few years ago when I first met you, I met you at uh, Hawthorne and we've got 15 that day. Was that a memorable for you? <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 It was pretty memorable. Um, Sorry I got out on you. No, it was great. Um, <laughs> wasn't as memorable as uh, last year at Ringwood. I thought we, we blazed them to all parts. Yeah, it, was uh, <laughs> it was pretty good. We put on 15 <laughs> But even more so, the warm-up game when King hit Wilcox from behind. That was brilliant. Yeah, loved it. Last one, Croft. No, I just think that the club should know it wasn't. I was certainly going to ask the question today, but I'm presuming there would be a lot of others. We've got a fantastic year up here for Ian Jonathan Moss against 
the cloud board giving data to us in here is just an absolute fantastic injection, injection of the right way. Because the enthusiasm he has for the game, the friendships that he's gained, the ability that he's got, and what he's proven at state level and international level has been absolutely superb, which we should all be proud of. And you, David, you've actually gave the club a start. Rice came, you came, Rossi came, and really, really put that great, great uh, want to will into the club. And we've never looked back. We still need a premiership, which is coming. But uh, I think really, people here tonight should know that by getting David there, uh, oh, I made the national bank, does that sound right? Yeah, yeah. In Perth, that famous day, uh, we'll never, ever, ever regret that because he is just a, a class. Thank you to see you, David. Thanks, Paul. David, thanks very much. David, you've only made, just before we go, you've only made eight hundreds for Paran. Um, I've made nine. Is that something <laughs> that you're determined to overtake me, as you know? Is that this week, can we pencil one in? No, definitely not. If you saw me batting the nets tonight, definitely not. Although I smack Wilcox around everywhere. <laughs> uh, so did you long last week. <laughs> I read the paper. I really enjoyed that one. I will get a higher score than you. That's that's probably more of a bugbear. Yeah, that's all right. I'm happy for you to do that. I prefer <laughs> you to go Paran. Okay, thanks very much, David. You're a uh, wonderful Paran person. I'm here with Kath Hempenstall ahead of the girls' first game against Essendon Maribyrnong Park on the weekend. Kath, welcome to True Blues TV. Thanks for having me, Moz. Outstanding. So, the girls this week. How's the preseason gone? A lot of new players and a few new coaches as well. Yeah, too right. We've got a lot of new players, so it'll be interesting to see how the, um, how the girls shape up this year and how we all come together. And yeah, obviously new coach in, in Carl as well. So yeah, pretty exciting and can't wait to get out there. Fantastic. A lot of young players around the club. A few words on them. Yeah, we've got some good young players. Um, Maddie Sterling um, and Annabelle Sutherland, probably two players to look out for in a um, Victorian pathway system at the moment. So yeah, um, most of the players are pretty young. So um, yeah, hopefully we go okay and yeah. Fantastic. The first season for the girls last year was, I think, deemed a successful one, transferring across. What are the expectations this season? Yeah, I guess last year there were probably always going to be a few um, teething problems just with a new group and a new setup. So hopefully we've got through most of that. And um, yeah, a new group again this year with some, some good recruits in the off season. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, how it all comes together. But um, yeah, lots of, lots of new girls and who've brought some enthusiasm to the group. So yeah, can't wait to get started. Terrific. Izzy Westbury, stand-in captain this week. A word on her. Yeah, Izzy played a few games in the back end for us last year, um, who I believe is the captain of Middlesex. Um, she's also brought another player over with her, Naomi Detone. Tony Dutney? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, Good. yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, she's obviously done a lot of captaining before over there in, in the county setup. So, and, um, yeah, so she brings a wealth of experience with her leadership quality. So, yeah, hopefully she does a good job and hopefully we get the win as well. Outstanding. Kath, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me, Moz. So I'm here with one of the century makers on the weekend, James Billington in the threes, 142 not out. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Moz. Um, we are a bit surprised to be sent in on the... Uh, it was ext extremely flat. So um, I think Pikey was pretty happy that we lost the toss and got sent in. And, um, yeah, it was a good day, I guess. Outstanding. You, you spent the winter in England. How'd you go over there? How'd you find it? Um, yeah, I was over at um, Maidenhead and Bray Cricket Club. And um, they looked after me very well over there. So, yeah, I was very lucky. I had a great time. Outstanding. You go for Chelsea in the Premier League. Could you give us a word on how they're going and how well Everton played against them the other week? You know the answer to that. We'll move on from there. Fantastic. If you had to now, this is something that we're going to see regularly on True Blues TV. If you had to nominate the worst bloke at Paran, the worst bloke at Paran, who would it be? Oh, there's not too many to choose from, so we're pretty lucky. But um, Chris Diggle would be right up there. Right up there. He's a standout? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Yeah, he takes it for me. Sorry, Diggle. Outstanding. So I'm also with the other century maker from the week. And in the second 11, young Nick King, 101 not out. Congratulations. Uh, thanks, Moz. Yeah, it was a good day. Pretty good wicket down here at Turak Park. So, yeah, nice day. Couldn't get the win, unfortunately, though. So yeah. I don't like hearing that. <laughs> uh, you've scrubbed up really well. For, so obviously I told you during the week and you've, you've overdressed. Well done. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, got the, got the word and I uh, thought... Put a nice shirt on. So, during the week, the Warrnambool advertiser—I don't know what they call it down there—published a headline. I've heard you referred to as King Nick, and you want to be—you like to be referred to yourself as King Nick. And is this true? You said you're the biggest thing to come out of Warrnambool since Jonathan Brown. 
Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not not sure where you've uh, come up with that from, but nah, yeah, that was the headline. But um, yeah, I don't want to, don't really want uh, that name. So yeah, Warnable three-hour trip. You've been making it regularly. You do it with Ben Rantel, who also made his debut in the twos on the weekend. Tell us a bit about what happened on the weekend with him. Ah, uh, yeah, he's pretty excited to come down here and. Uh, Third ball, he got a nice little edge uh, caught behind, and uh, yeah, there was a bit of celebrating going on. Um, <laughs> Are you claiming there was a bit of me, me, me time? I've heard he did a lap of the ground. Uh, yeah, that's fair to say. <laughs> Finger up in the air, you know. No. Yeah, a bit of uh, shouting, a bit of wooing, so he's, he's very happy with himself about that. Fantastic. Nick, well done on the weekend, and good luck for the rest of the year. Thank you very much. And uh, that's all we've got time for on True Blues TV for this week. Hope you can join us for our next edition, which will be in the coming weeks. And uh, we'll have plenty more players and all sorts of stuff happening. So thanks for your company. Cheers. See you later. There's a new path from the backyard to the baggy green. Milo Inter Cricket is where kids learn the basics. Milo T20 Blast, action pack games for kids where everyone gets a go. And then it's on to junior club cricket. So become part of the Australian cricket team. Visit playcricket.com.au to find out where you can play.